welcome to That's Canon, a podcast talking about the Canon film series and other similar movies. This is episode 42, and I'm your host, Phil. And I'm a werewolf. Spooky werewolf. (laughs) Lightning thunder. Spooky, sexy werewolves. I will. There was not (laughs) one sexy werewolf in this movie. (laughs) No. Thank God they didn't go the Twilight route. Yes. Instead, we got. British gothic horror in the finest fashion with the company of wolves. Yes. Um, I, I say the finest of fashions because this is, again, in my opinion, mom horror. Yeah, I see. Is, I don't know why I would call this horror. I don't know what this movie is. And I really don't know if I like this movie. I've got complicated feelings about this movie, but I don't know if I'd call it horror. This movie I would say it's horror because this movie is essentially the evil that men do and the warning that all women get as, or all girls get as they approach womanhood, which is essentially don't trust guys. Yeah, I can get that. But yeah, I guess it's more of, I guess it kind of is horror because a lot of fairy tales are sort of just kind of horrifying on their own. But see, that's the thing like that. That's kind of my central problem, I think, with this movie is that I don't like like a lot of the other kind of movies we've seen. I don't know what audience they were going for. <laughs> exactly. Because, because I don't know what genre it is. Like, it, it doesn't feel like horror to me. So people going in expecting like a cool werewolf, like horror slasher movie would be hella disappointed. It- but but like even like you couldn't have kids watching this movie either because there's some pretty gruesome scenes. Exactly. I don't know who this is for. Exactly. That's the confusing part. At first it seemed so tame. Mm-hmm. And then there's there is some pretty <laughs> gruesome things inside of it. And then yeah. at the end it kind of just ends. There's Yeah. It doesn't wrap up anything that it sets out at least how, sets out to do what I felt it was trying to accomplish. Um, it's more, I, I almost thought this is closer to like an anthology movie. Oh, a hundred percent. Right. An anthology movie that doesn't capitalize on being an anthology movie. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's some connective tissue, but it doesn't. Yeah. Like you said, it just kind of ends and there's no like final resolution to the framing story. We'll, we'll we'll get into all this, but there's like imagine all of these kind of anthology movies or or movies where there's like dreams within a dream, stories within a story. It's all very confusing and doesn't really give a cohesive message. I don't think. I don't know. I go back and forth. We'll we'll, we'll talk about it, but it's a uh, it's 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 a hard movie to pin down genre and structure wise. The movie, The Company of Wolves, is directed and written by Neil Jordan, who isn't a schlub when it comes to making movies. This is his second film that he cre- that he made, mm-hmm. um, but he's an Academy Award winning director for The Crying Game. He was really? awarded Best Director for Saturn Awards for Interview with a Vampire. This guy directed Interview with a Vampire? Yeah. Oh, wow. So, so he's got some serious cred. Yeah, he, he is not a bad filmmaker. Um the movie stars, and I put that in quotes, Angela Lansbury. <laughs> she has top billing for some reason. I think it's because she's doing, what's that old woman solves mystery show? The murder she wrote thing. Murder she wrote. Yes. Yeah. Which I can't believe I don't remember the name of that. <laughs> that used to be like a Sunday afternoon thing that I would watch with my mom. I've... I've never seen a single episode, but I feel like I, I, I knew exactly what you were talking about because it's one of those things that I, I feel like was always having reruns around the other shows that I wanted to watch. Or they were constantly like saying like, you know, tonight on Murder, She Wrote, like they were always throwing like uh, like bumpers for it around other shows. Oh, yeah. Because the, the Murder, She Wrote ran from 1984 to 1996 and it had 12 seasons wow. and 264 episodes. Jeez, I had a, that's a good run four television films, and a 2009 point-and-click video game. <laughs> really? Yeah. Interesting. They're going for the the mom gamer. Yeah. Early, early, niche. <laughs> early mom gamer. It, uh, uh, 
not to get off on a tangent, but Murder, She Wrote and Columbo were two mystery type show movie things that me and my mom would watch. Oh, I don't know if you know who Columbo oh, yeah. is. Yeah. Just one more thing. Just one more thing. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the movie also has in it two, I would say, pretty famous actors in it that at first glance, I didn't realize who they were. David Warner, he plays the father character in the film. Right. Very recognizable, like that's the guy, British actor. Oh, definitely. And another one named Stephen Ray. He was in V for Vendetta, The Crying Game. Um, so he's been in a couple movies that the director has done as well. Okay. That kind of like worked with each other. But I, I, I've seen this guy in a couple things. He was also in Underworld. So he's he kept on doing oh, okay. some lycanthropy type movies. Yeah, what a weird thing to get typecast as. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're the werewolf dude. You're a you're a weird 1800s era werewolf guy, I guess. Okay. Uh, the movie starts off in quote unquote present day which would be 80s yeah in uh i guess in the present day and it's it's really weird a, a mother and a father come home to their eldest daughter and they're like hey where's your younger sister and then she's like oh the pest she's the pest. up sleeping and there's like a lot of animosity towards the younger sister uh that spoilers never gets resolved we don't understand why the older sister doesn't like the younger sister that uh, yeah that's uh, there's a lot in this that that framing story that goes really untouched for other than this first like minute maybe right Right? uh and it was really awkward because the the parents were like go fetch your younger sister so we can do stuff right and all these people that were seeing the father the mother they're, they're, they will all play parts in the fantasy realm as well. Right. It's kind of like Wizard of Oz. I, I, I knew the dad, like he, he, because he's that famous character actor. He shows up right away in the next dream sequence we get to. I definitely saw spotted him right away. I wasn't sure at first if it was the same mom because I like I feel like we didn't really get a good look at her in the, in the like very beginning there, did we? Uh, kind of, kind of quick glances of her. I honestly yeah. felt it was the older sister that we didn't really get like a good. I don't remember her seeing her in the film, the rest of the film. Yeah. I mean, I saw, yeah, aside from the very beginning, otherwise we just get more shots of her feet, like running around through the house when she's going to go try to fetch her sister from like up 10 flights of stairs and around 10 hallways. This exactly. giant ass, like English mansion. <laughs> Is that a giant ass English mansion, but the little sister is sleeping in the tiniest bed I've ever seen. Right? It's barely as wide as her. And it's like it, it again, this maybe it's just because we see her go up so many flights of stairs, but it feels like it's in like the at like the corner attic at the far end of the house, like oh, yeah. up in the up in the old shitty part of the house where there's like comes like because like they, they see the sister running through the hallways of the house and it gets like nastier and nastier looking as she goes up and the hallway where her sister's room is off of it's got this like it's all filthy and dirty and it looks like the carpet hasn't been washed ever it's it's definitely gives you the idea that they don't like the younger daughter <laughs> uh maybe there's there's a lot of room for us to kind of fill in our own plot maybe that's why she's a pest she's like the, the 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 bastard daughter that no one that they don't talk about <laughs> she's the she's the harry potter but she doesn't turns and she doesn't become a <laughs> a wizard um, and I also thought it was weird as the older sister is like knocking on the door to try to wake her up because the door mm-hmm. is locked. The she's kept on calling her the pest and how you know degrading her. But it no, honestly it looked like the younger sister was either dying from some severe illness or because of the heavy breathing, uh, doing like her O face. It was really weird. I couldn't get what they were trying to yeah. achieve here because either she's in such deep slumber and she has some kind of illness that has taken over her. I, I don't I don't get what they're trying to do here. Yeah, I, I think she's okay. She's clearly like asleep, but there's a couple things wrong with it. One is like you said, I guess she's meant to be having a like a bad dream, which we eventually get to, but she looks like she's out of breath from running yeah. or something, but also she's got like a face full of makeup on. Oh, yes. 
<laughs> like and like thick red lipstick and a whole lot of blush. Even it's the uh, the older <laughs> sister is like, oh, I know you got into my makeup, and I know you're wearing my lipsticks and yeah. <laughs> and it's just kind of like did are they poisoned is this what happened to the sister like she took poison oh that's interesting it's just such an odd thing yeah there's 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 a clearly like you're trying to set up something about the relationship between this these two sisters but you're kind of left puzzled because it goes by too quick or is left unsaid or it's so boring you don't really give a shit <laughs> you're just wondering why this teenager is wearing heavy makeup while she's sleeping for some reason exactly um and like all great movies do it fades away and we go into the dream of the younger sister and that's where we enter the fantasy realm yes. so this whole movie is inconsequential because it's also a dream yep I will say the the shot that they did where they go into the dream world where they like start the cameras like facing her in the bed and she's having a bad dream and it like sweeps across her room and then goes out a window. That shot looked really good. There's a lot about the like the production quality of this movie that I really like, which I'll touch on as we go. But this is the first part that I was actually like impressed with a shot is like a really it's like a really cool window and there's like a nice. I don't know if it's a matte painting or a miniature like landscape, but there's like a nice mountain in the background. It looks really cool. Oh, definitely. There is no doubt they spent a good amount of money on making the movie look cool. There's nothing in this movie that I thought looked bad. All the sets and all the effects are yeah. awesome. They they needed to polish up on the actual story that they were telling. Um, because as you said, they, they pan around the room. They show objects from the little sister's room. Right, like dolls, teddy bears, toys, things like that. And as she's entering, quote unquote, the fantasy realm, they're life-sized in her dreams. And they're like reaching out to her and grabbing her and stuff. That's um, kind of, it was kind of creepy. It reminded me of that scene in Akira where he's having that fever dream in the yeah. hospital and all the teddy bears and they like start bleeding milk and weird fucked up shit like that. <laughs> it was it's, really cool. It is a it is pretty neat. They they needed to lean into more of that. I would have yeah appreciated the film if she was like modern day girl goes into fairy tale land, right? Yeah, um, but as really cool. she makes the transition to, I guess like I guess we'll just say fairy tale land. Yeah, fairy tale land. She is a part of that world, like. It is set in the, I don't know, 1700s or something like that. Indeterminate fantasy time period. Anywhere between like medieval 1500s, but they've got clocks and shit on the mantelpiece. So anywhere between there and like the 1880s or something like that. Yeah. Really kind of weird time period to pin down. Um, and actually, you know what? This is why we don't see the older sister. She's actually killed in the very beginning. She gets off the path. Of, of the the place that they're in they don't really give it a name either like the town that they're in she she strays from the path and she's killed by the wolves and that's yeah. that's kind of like the through line for the entire film is don't get off the path right, right? and i i like that because like we, we we set up a little bit in the beginning or the sisters kind of like are they kind of butt heads they don't really like each other i like the idea of the one sister who's kind of like getting shit on by the older sister having a dream where her where her older sister gets killed by wolves like that's kind of a weird like morbid nightmare that a kid would actually have about a sibling or a work like a schoolmate or someone that they hate i thought that was kind of a cool idea i wish they did more with that uh, yeah they kind of uh, while they bring up that her sister died it doesn't really play too much plot point in the film no one yeah. seems particularly upset about it they kind of get over it really quick um but the younger sister goes off with angela lansbury to stay with her while they're in mourning quote unquote mourning no one's really mourning anything no that sister is like not even cold in the ground and the rest of the, they're like all kind of moving on granny's just as chipper as ever exactly uh as they're walking towards the cabin in the woods, you know, Angela Lansbury's dispensing advice, such as don't stray from the path, right? Mm -hmm. um, and as they get up 
to her cabin. There's like apples on the ground and the little girl picks one up to eat it. And as she bites into it, there's a worm and Angela Lansbury dispenses more advice, which is actually your quote of the week. Yes, we get it really early on. And I thought this was just going to be like a throwaway line of just granny saying (laughs) granny things like sage wisdom. But she says, oh, you've got a lot to learn, child. Never stray from the path. Never eat a windfall apple and never trust a man whose eyebrows meet. (gasps) what don't trust like, Luna brown chuds I, like i mean this weirdly turns out to be in like a central plot point that comment about unibrowed men but I, I like at the time i just thought it was like a funny weird like is she just saying like don't trust those gypsies they'll grift you like Pretty i thought it was much. like a weird like like an off color like ethnic thing but no she was a, it was a little bit of foreshadowing which i kind of have to give a little bit of credit to the movie for it, yeah, exactly. Because at first I was kind of like, okay, I get it. Don't don't eat an apple that fell from a tree. Pick it from the vine, right? But then I was like, unibrows. Like, who gives a shit about that? But yeah, it immediately really leans into it. Um, <laughs> and Granny wasn't just being racist. She's <laughs> she's actually giving real advice about werewolves. Grandma's not crazy. <laughs> Grandma's not crazy. Uh, later that night, Angela Lansbury and the the little sister are knitting a red something you're you're not aware of what it is yet but it is bright vibrant red and Mm -hmm. since this is in the old days there's no tv so they had to tell each other stories to keep (laughs) each other entertained (laughs) and that's what grandma does so now greg we're two fucking levels (sighs) deep yeah it's a dream (laughs) and now it's a story inside the dream yep we're a story within a dream two hours deep we're in full-fledged inception mode here yeah that's exactly what i told jackie i was like this is inception yeah we're too in deep um God damn it, christopher nolan did you rip off a company of wolves exactly. you sly fucker uh she must this this girl must have some kind of like brain disease or something <laughs> some brain virus <laughs> brain eating amoeba that's why she's like breathing so sharply in her bed as she's fucking sweating um, she's having inception dreams ex- Gra- like oh that's what it is that granny is actually her granny in real life and she's trying to plant ideas in her granddaughter's brain she's she's inceptioning her granddaughter you see i assumed something like that was going to happen but angela spoilers angela lansbury is never seen in modern day no she's only just exists some- in the dream yeah okay anyways um <laughs> Angela Lansbury is spinning a yarn of a woman and a man who get married. And again, this is still set in the 1800s or whatever, because, you know, we're in the past in a dream. Uh, Fantasy land. Exactly. The one thing I did like is, you know, like they're they're getting married. Obviously, they're going to get ready for some um, bedroom aerobics. And hey, wedding night, baby. <laughs> the wife like pulls the sheets from the bed and she's like, oh, a hedgehog. This is a practical joke by people. <laughs> yeah, where like, did what? that shit come from? Like, so, did she say it was like her brother's idea of a joke or something? Yeah. I, I Oh, ha ha. Ha ha. I get it. Hedgehogs. Hedgehog in the bed. What a classic. <laughs> Maybe that <laughs> is a classic back then. It's like, oh, you got fucking hog. Medieval fantasy time. <laughs> oh they're gonna they're gonna sit on that hedgehog and get spines at their butt oh which is weird because have you ever pet a hedgehog they're not the spines are spiny but they're not gonna go inside of you and they're not porcupines yeah actual barbs i don't know man i've always wanted a a hedgehog as a pet little baby sonic yeah i hear they're like illegal in a lot of states really yeah I i thought they were is this something like, do they carry diseases or something? I thought they were just like glorified guinea pigs. I think it's because if they get loose. Um, oh, they're invasive or something. It is currently illegal to own a hedgehog in California, Georgia, Hawaii, New York City, Omaha, Nebraska, and Washington, D.C. Wow. Huh. I I like the idea that so they, they filmed this in the UK and that hedgehog in the, in the scene got, got out. And now the UK is overrun with hedgehogs. They're just everywhere. <laughs> They're just everywhere. Yeah. Like well, tribbles. I, man, I'd love that one a hedgehog. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> so the, Back to the, the wedding man, scene. Exactly. The, the, man wedding the, night. the man and the woman, they're kind of talking. Uh, I I didn't 
think that this dude had a unibrow. It's not like he had a massive unibrow. Going no, on. it was clearly like I'm glad they didn't go too big with it because it was clearly something that they added in like as like a makeup, you know, like a fake mustache, or something like a little prosthetic that they put between his eyebrows. It could have been way worse, but he spends all this this whole scene in this little dimly lit cabin, like standing back in the shadows. You you really can't get a good look at him either way. Yeah, and it, this is the same night. It's the same wedding night. Uh, he goes, he puts the hedgehog outside as he turns back to look at his wife. His eyes have like a different glow to it. They have like yellow yeah. rings around it. That and awesome the- like Michael Jackson thriller contact lens. Exactly. And then the guy just fucks off into the woods and leaves his wife behind. And when it years later it's like dot 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 years yeah. later yeah granny was she's saying like oh and she waited and she waited like <laughs> he just peaced out for for th- three years and she's like okay well i guess i'm gonna get remarried now well isn't that kind of weird that's a weird story it's a weird story to tell because of that i think like it, it, they gloss over a lot of it's a weird thing to gloss over like it, one part She's she's just waiting in bed. Oh, he's probably just out like peeing or something. And then without which is like a really quick hand wave, we're three or four years later and she's got like this all this brand new family and husband. Right? Like wh- why even tell this story? I don't <laughs> I don't get it. It's such a weird story. Um, Manny, I don't like this story. Can we skip to the point? This is boring. Exactly. That's what <laughs> I would be saying. What the fuck? It's fantasy times. There's no TV and even I'm bored. Exactly. So uh, they they cut cut two years later. She now has like three kids. Uh, she looks fucking tired as shit. She's probably <laughs> yeah. closer to the grave than she, you know, <laughs> isn't because um, this is the 1800s. I'm only 17 and I'm about to die. <laughs> Pretty and much. Times. And then the husband returns and he's disheveled he's got long hair and when he comes back he's like you whore you cheated on me what what does he expect this was years later yeah uh what a nice guy here right (laughs) he's a fantasy incel pretty much he starts like he's like give me food and she's like are you hungry he's like give me food i already (laughs) told you little bit of a continuity issue here i'm not sure if you noticed when she was serving the soup to her kids it was like a red cabbage soup but when she serves it to the husband when he like you know is grumpy about it it's like chicken noodle soup it's like yellow broth i did not notice that (sighs) if you can't get your soups right how am i gonna respect you movie i know that's unforgivable can't go from like borscht to chicken noodle soup come on now and uh well even he gets pissed about the soup because he just fucking flips the table <laughs> immediately didn't even taste it man uh and then he starts literally ripping his face off yeah we we go from sleepy fantasy fairy tale movie to like hardcore gore film in like half a second and this is the tonal issue with the movie uh we're 30 20 they're almost 30 minutes into it yeah. and it's it, all of a sudden it starts to turn out to be super gory yeah it, and it's like it, it's that same kind of whiplash you get in poltergeist where the one the like the camera crew guy that they bring in to do the like the you know sensing for ghosts in the house and he like goes into the bathroom and starts like peeling his face off yeah it, it, it's like i mean obviously that movie gets weirder and creepier later on but like you're not expecting that level of gore so it's like zero to 11 and you're just like, whoa, you're not expecting it at all. And yeah, and this guy's like, he's ripping his like pieces of his skin off and it looks really good too. Like you see like muscle fiber underneath his cheeks. It's it, really well done. It is very well done because he's not, he just doesn't just like rip his entire face off. He does it in chunks. And yeah. then once it gets to like the, the flesh, <laughs> at the, the uncle Frank from uh, Hellraiser. <laughs> yeah exactly you see like the muscle tissue and then the the mouth juts out kind of like american werewolf in london 
Yep. The, 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 the werewolf snout kind of like pops out the front of his face. Exactly. And it's it a looks great transformation. Dope as shit. Yeah. So dope. But this is like, again, we were alluding to earlier. This was the big moment where you're like, wait, like, who is this movie for? Because if I were showing this to my kids as like a Little Red Riding Hood movie, I, I would be like, OK, time to leave the room. Oh, definitely. Right. I I would be terrified as a kid <laughs> seeing this. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, this major nightmare fuel. Um very very terrifying <laughs> and yeah extremely gory but again well done like this that's what you and i as the horror hounds we are like i'm glad at this point it kind of kicks into gear because this is what i came into the movie expecting all along so I, at least we got some of it exactly um and eventually after the transformation is complete it's it's an animatronic wolf it looks pretty cool um, mm-hmm. But they they sparingly show it, which is probably for the best. And exactly. then the new husband comes in and immediately is like, he grabs like a shovel. He's like, bam, I cut <laughs> your head off. It's <laughs> this this dog, this this poor werewolf, which is I'm weird that I'm sympathizing with it, has like just like not a second ago finished transforming. And then with zero effort, the new husband, it's like instantly beheaded, like one clean cut. Like, whoa. Again, this gore and violence is coming out of nowhere. Uh, and you see the wolf head fly through the sky <laughs> and it falls into a vat of milk. Yeah. And as the head goes in, the wolf head goes in, arises the man's face. That, I thought that was really well done. It was such a seamless... Um, like trans transition from the dog head to the man, like the, like the prosthetic guy head. Like I, I couldn't tell. I think, I mean, I'm sure it was just like a fade, but it was really seamless. It was, it was a really, really, really good transition. Yeah. I think um, it's bec- like, I think that they were so like zoomed in on the milk and the splashing was like right in front of the lens. Like, I think that's where they like hit it. Oh, yeah, I, I, I have to go back and watch it, but yeah, really well done. Um, the woman, the wife goes over to the severed head inside the vat of milk and goes, Oh, it looks just like my old husband the the day that I met him. (laughs) And then the husband starts beating the shit out of her. (laughs) Why? (laughs) That's grandma's story. (laughs) Like, okay. Yeah. That's like, it's weird enough that this, the new husband was like beating her all of a sudden for, for no, for touching the head, I guess. But then you then you're like ripped back into the quote unquote reality of the first dream layer. And you're just thinking, like, was Granny telling like this and all this gory detail to her do- to her granddaughter? What a weird thing to do. I I know. And that's that's the weird thing about the damn movie is just like, what are we? Oh, what's this cautionary tale that we're telling? And why do I care? <laughs> I think it's just Granny's got a really maybe Granny is like a horror hound too, but they didn't have horror movies back then, so she's got to like make up these super gory stories, oh. and she's just trying to scare the shit out of her granddaughter. I I think so because after Grandma's done telling the story, I, I, even Angela Lansbury gets creepy right here. She's like, "Give me a kiss because I told you a story." Don't I deserve a kiss for the story? Yeah. And I'm just like, is she a werewolf? I honestly thought at this point that Angela Lansbury might be a werewolf herself. <laughs> I thought the I thought the exact same thing. It was a weird, like that's like what the what what evil characters do in movies right before they reveal that they're evil. Right. right? I thought that I thought that was gonna happen too, but no. Bait and switch. Um at night, Angela Lansbury and the little daughter are sleeping in a same bed together um and did you notice there's like some weird ferret animal that just kind of like looks around in yeah the cabin what the fuck was that i don't i don't know it i haven't i just wrote times. down I, I yeah a couple times after the rest of the movie too like when people like walk in the door this this dead weasel hanging on the wall was like like look at it look at look at whoever came in the door and then just kind of go back to being dead and it's not explained at all exactly uh, I don't know. I'm just, I'm at this point, 
there we've seen so much weird fairy tale shit. I'm just I'm just rolling with the punches at this point. Like whatever, fine. There's a weird dead weasel that's like a puppet now, and it's talking to them while they're sleeping. Fine, whatever. <laughs> and again, like it it's weird because there's there's a really uh, the little the little sister is going back to the home. So Angela Lansbury is escorting her through the woods, and right. there's just like a boa constrictor in the in the trees. Did you notice yeah. that? Like oh. like a, like a tropical snake in this british forest i guess yeah weird um but as the the little sister gets back home <laughs> the, the father's like we made too much dinner uh but we shouldn't mourn and then the next day comes and we get introduced <laughs> to i think the the most annoying character in the film which is the blacksmith's son who has a crush on the little sister yeah, the, the annoying little like wiener kid who I think is credited as Amorous Boy. Oh my god, that's even worse. He didn't have a legit name. He didn't even have a name. He's just a- boy. Amorous Boy's father. Ugh, boy. Played by Brian Glover, who was in An American Werewolf in London and Alien 3. There's no oh. way that this is the same person. Oh, yeah. Don't you don't you think I didn't notice that we get the warden from Alien 3? For half a second in this movie, I was like static to see him show up again. Who, who did I just click? Amorous boy's father. Okay, Amherst I'm looking father, for yeah. Amorous boy, who's Shane Johnstone, and he doesn't even have a fucking yeah. link. So, <laughs> oh, anyway, he's got, he's got a red link on Wikipedia. You know, he's a nobody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Womp womp. Uh, at, for some reason, we do cut back to present day. Uh, just to just for you to remember, this is a dream, and then we cut immediately back to the past, where yeah, again, just like more old timey stuff is happening. Uh, the mother and the father are kind of in mourning, but not too much. The no. little sister is she. The little sister wakes up to see the mom and the dad having sex, in the and then just kind of goes back to sleep. Yeah. Um, and then the next day, the little sister's like, Hey, does that hurt? And the mom's like, No, but sometimes you just gotta let guys have sex, so it's okay. <laughs> Which is why, like, we talked in the beginning, like, like there's like it's sort of like a cautionary tale about you know, young girls like, wa- like watching out for like predatory men, but then like the, the mixed message from the mother, it's like, Sometimes you just gotta like let it happen. <laughs> what kind of message is that i exactly it's so confusing um old timey old timey old wives tale wisdom i guess <laughs> just just let it happen but then, but then she the little sister immediately goes to angela lansbury they're like chilling in a cemetery and she's like hey i saw awesome. mom and dad having sex uh what's that all about and angela <laughs> lansbury is like oh you don't want that to happen men are disgusting protect yourself <laughs> oh granny granny got her heart broken at some point 20 years ago and, and then it, it it cuts to another dream sequence this one i got weird i don't fucking get what happened here no nope. um and i'm gonna have to use wikipedia here to help me so granny's <laughs> second tale to the little sister is about a young man who eyebrows meet he's the bastard son of a priest and he's walking through the enchanted forest where he encounters the devil played by Terrence Stamp. That's right. General Zod of Superman. Hell is in yeah. This film. And this is the only scene that he's in. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he, but the, Terrence Stamp rolls up in a Rolls Royce. In a car, like a white 1930s limousine driven by the main girl. Set in the 1800s how is grandma telling a story about a fucking rolls royce i i don't know i like see here's the thing it would be one thing if we were only one layer of dream depth where like the girl in the 80s was having a dream about an 1800s kid confronting general zod in a car because the eight, <laughs> 1980s girl has the has the mental context for all of those elements and can you know mangle them together. 
into a weird dream. What does Fantasy World 1800s Granny? How does she? How is she describing a car? I, I have no idea, it's... and that's what's so confusing about. <laughs> and I gotta tell you, when this scene happened, this film took a big hit for me personally because now it's yeah. destroying the its own rules it set up. It's one of the. It's it's the reason that. I'm never a big fan of like dreamy. You're not sure what's reality and what's not kinds of movies. I, I think, I mean, I, I know that the, some of those very popular, really well, like well-renowned movies are kind of have that element to it. It's just not my thing. And it's cases like this where like, even in within the, the, the dreamlike rules that we've seen so far, it just is like circular. It's hard to, it's hard to put my finger on, but it's so loopy that I just can't, I just, I can't enjoy it. I, mean, oh, yeah. I spent too much time trying to like fill it in with logic to my own detriment <laughs> and it's distracting. It is. It is. And I didn't get that Terrence Stamp was the devil. They, they don't call him the devil. Oh yeah. Well like, okay. Yeah. You mentioned like, Oh, it's the, like the, the bastard son of a priest. How do we know that? Exactly. He's, the, he's supposed to be the devil. How, like, how do we know that? Um, I don't, I don't know. But anyways, the devil offers the boy a transformative potion that he immediately just rums up on his chest. Uh, okay. Uh, and then there was, a really, do. <laughs> there was a really good effect of hair rapidly growing. I thought that was cool. Yeah. And I, I'm like, okay, so maybe this is like a potion to make him older faster. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. Um, the boy is pleased, but shortly thereafter, vines grow swiftly from around him, twining around his legs and trapping him. I've seen this scene in the evil, evil dead. dead that yeah. boy is about to get tree raped <laughs> oh no i okay like my interpretation of it thus far was that like the, we're seeing granny tell the story of like the birth of the first werewolf like it like it was a weird messed up gift that the devil gave to some kid who was like selling his soul in some way this is just me like trying to interpret it, but I have no explanation whatsoever for the weird vine thing. What I, was that all about? I mean, I don't know. I don't get it either. And honestly, I don't think they took it that far that he was the first werewolf because I got to tell you, I watched this movie and I didn't even get that. I just thought something weird was happening. I didn't get that. He was the like a werewolf. I got to be honest. I Again, yeah, it's not, it's not, clear whatsoever this is me thinking after the fact like okay he had the unibrow he was growing hair he was transforming like uh, it was my best guess it was I, just like the story of the first but like it would have been cool if they had leaned into that like give you more yeah. clues that hey like we're this the great that's what granny's doing she's saying this is where they this was the first werewolf and it was because of you know the, the the priest's bastard son and he was didn't know his place in the world and sold his soul to the devil like that's a cool story tell that more literally exactly instead of through mirrors and smoke um <laughs> dreams within a dream within a dream within a dream his anger anguished visage appears in the little sister's bedroom mirror at the end of the dream sequence and that's it which okay there's there's one last thing i got to say there was granny telling was that part of granny's story the girl in the 80s waking up in her bedroom was that part of granny's story was that a dream was Granny referring to the the story that she's a part of? Granny was telling the little sister a story about this kid who sold his soul to the devil that was in the little sister's mirror when she woke up. I... <laughs> Again, we're like, that's like three Inception levels deep, right? Yeah. And again, it's, insane. it's like... It, it's it's a it's a character in a story referring to the person telling the story yeah uh, yeah i don't know <laughs> again th at this point like all logic is out the window so i'm just kind of rolling with it at this point point. and what's insane though is that like the set pieces and everything looks so good in this movie mm -hmm. everything um as the story ends granny gives the little sister a red bright cloak and you realize that the uh -huh. little sister is pretty much little red riding hood yeah 
I, I'm honestly a little ashamed of myself that I didn't realize it earlier. When, when Granny had the ball yarn, the big red ball yarn. I didn't think movie. I didn't think anything of it when I first saw the big ball of red yarn. Yeah, me, me, me neither. I mean, I guess that's a little bit of a credit to the movie where like it's not uh, like immediately obvious. Like, oh, this is a red, little red riding hood rip off. I like that. They kind of slow burned it a little bit. Um, a little bit of credit where credits do, I guess. A little bit. <laughs> everyone is now gathered inside a church where the priest is given a sermon for some reason just a shit ton of spiders falls on the little sister <laughs> out of she nowhere took it like a champ too i would have fucking flipped oh yeah like and these are like i think if you haven't seen you know if you haven't seen the movie dear listener uh these are like small tarant like like half dollar size tarantula looking spiders yeah they're huge i would have shit myself did- yeah, it's like a pile of them. I would be like running screaming out of this church if a big pile of tarantulas fell on like the Bible that I was holding. Good God. And this girl is like mm, and sweeps them off casually. It's like it's nothing. Uh, as they as they leave the church, the amorous boy comes up and uh, is trying to court the this young woman. And everyone from this, I guess, village is like looking at him going like, yeah. Those Aww. two are gonna fuck one day and make more people. <laughs> it's so creepy. There are only two teenagers in town. There's yeah. only one way it can go. <laughs> They're doing the math. One plus uh, one equals two. They're going for a walk in the woods, eh? Um, wow, wow, wow. Exactly. And <laughs> as they go into the woods, like they immediately go off the path, right? Immediately yeah. go off the path. They didn't listen to Granny. Bad shit happens when you go off the path. And the Amber's boy is being such a nice guy because he's he's using shit logic like, oh, are you afraid to kiss me? That's why you won't kiss me. And, and <laughs> trying to like intentionally goad her into yeah. into doing something based off the facade of like, you won't do this because you're afraid or because you, you won't. won't. Yeah. It's like it's not kind of cutesy flirting between you know two kids two teenagers it's it's kind of creepy it's the manipulative (laughs) mind of an amorous child oh poor amorous boy um it it was just it didn't it didn't work for me at all uh and as they go deeper and deeper into the woods we realize that not only is this guy a low-key rapist but he's also a giant pansy because as soon as he sees a, what do you call it? A flock, a herd, a gaggle of wolves, a, a pack. pack of wolves, a flock of wolves. <laughs> as soon as he sees a flock of wolves. Oh my God. The wolves can fly now. <laughs> he bitches out immediately and he runs away. <laughs> no. And, yeah, exactly. He's like, oh, wolves. wolves. And a little he, weird kid. He runs back to the village where immediately everyone is like taking turns smacking the shit out of him going you pansy yeah like the first like he like first runs to the dad of the girl he's like where's my daughter where just what'd you do with her and he's like he's like beating him with the bucket from the well yeah (laughs) jesus i was just like hell yeah dude like beat the (laughs) shit out of this kid he uh, left that poor girl for dead out there the only one who's standing up for him is his father, uh, the, the guy from Alien 3. This is rumor control. Here are the facts. My son is not a murderer. Exactly. <laughs> but he's not because the daughter just shows up out of in nowhere. She's like, hey, wolves, look at this creepy statue I found. Yeah, like we we glossed over the like the weird part because like as the as the wiener kid is running back to town, we get shots of this girl like she she climbs up a big tree with like a rainbow going over it and she finds a couple things in a nest she finds a little hand mirror which she looks into she finds a little thing of like red lipstick which yeah. she puts on immediately uh total disregard for covid rules um, oh my gosh the potential- fomites man fomites <laughs> who who stuck their finger in there and where was that finger before <laughs> <laughs> you don't know where that lipstick has been yeah 
creepy fantasy lipstick in a tree come on this is exactly. like the start of every horror movie ever what if it's so, like some witch who doesn't wipe properly you just got ass <laughs> on your lips <laughs> yeah, fecal lipstick <laughs> fecal lipstick <laughs> that's where the brown comes from exactly mm-hmm. <laughs> it's fucking yoda yoda. <laughs> yoda, yoda, yoda's like mm-hmm. i don't wipe right <laughs> secret fecal lipstick it is <laughs> <laughs> what, what a weird turn that took <laughs> oh man but like yeah either like it's it's weird enough on its own the fact that this girl is putting on mystery lipstick that she found in the giant bird's nest in the top of a tree but the last thing that she finds after she puts the creepy fecal lipstick on is these like giant robin's eggs they're which huge they're yeah huge i mean they're size like they're like size of softballs and they all start they all break open all at once and inside are these little like little like baby statues of small babies but they're made out of like white chocolate or something it's really bizarre it they're like that's like slimy little white chocolate babies it sounds even dumber when you say <laughs> it. i'm sure like imagine people listening to this right now phil and wondering what kind of weird bad mushrooms that we've taken like all of this is shit that happens in this movie yeah I'm not even like putting on a shtick to make it funny. It like all of this happens. It's weird as hell. It it sounds, yeah. It sounds even worse when you say like, and then the oven, <laughs> the robin's egg opens, and there's a statue inside of it. Like there's a little little white chocolate baby statue. Weird. Mm. Um. But, but yeah, yeah, fast forward back to the, the girl running back into town. No, no, I'm fine. I see everything's fine, and. She's holding one of the little white chocolate baby statues and she shows it to her mom who smiles at it. And then the scene ends. And the, the, the baby statues never brought up again. No, it doesn't play any plot in this... the film. What movie were we talking about one time where it's like I, I, I made that that assertion that like it's one of those movies that I feel like there's a message there that I was talking about the Green Knight. Yeah, in one of our previous episodes, and I was like, I know that there's like some, there's like good symbolism, or or something here, but I'm just too smooth brained to be grasping it. I I'm think... sure there's something here. I I or or maybe there isn't. I don't know, but maybe I'm giving the movie too much credit. But I feel like it's like way over my head. I'm I'm gonna defend you here. You're not smooth brained. I think the person <laughs> who wrote this is smooth brained. His aura is just high as fuck. Apparently. He's like, this means something, and it's like, but what? But what? It's like, I don't know, stuff. What if, man, there's like a baby <laughs> in the egg, man? It's like, we're and it's way out of white chocolate. We're all eggs. We're all, we're all egg. chocolate people, man. We're and all eggs. chocolate people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It definitely has the the look and feel of a, like an artsy movie trying to 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 symbolize something more, you know, something at a deeper level. And I just either i yeah either i'm not getting it or it's bad symbolism <laughs> it's bad symbolism <laughs> yeah i think i'm leaning in that direction too uh but we progress through the movie because i gotta tell you i i honestly thought about stopping it about when the chocolate the white chocolate baby showed up um oh, wow. almost a dnf for you i guess almost. that would have been the second this week uh yeah. But I didn't. I progressed forward because it's that's canon, right? And <laughs> uh, that is the all the men get prepared to go out to hunt the wolves because that's what men do. And for some reason, like the mom is bathing the the ch- the little sister, but there's like a struggle. She's like, I don't want to get bathed, and I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah, they they do. It's a weird way that they characterize this girl because in some she- scenes they portray her as being like an older teenager who's going out on dates and having like a romantic life, but also is infantilized because she's having her mother bathe her and in, in like behaving like a baby who doesn't want to take a bath. Like, what the hell is that all about? First off, infantilized, amazing word. <laughs> Got that off a of Snapple cap. <laughs> oh, that's even better. <laughs> Infantilized. I like. I hope that's that. a real word. Otherwise, I'm gonna look like a real chud. Uh, infantilized. Oh, thank God. Yeah. 
if antalized i mean you're gonna cut all that out right where oh yeah where i didn't i totally intended to that's a word that i use all the time and no <laughs> that's even creepier though if you use it all the time <laughs> if you, if you're like, this is infantilized greg that's that's not even the right context to use greg, the you, word you're talking you're talking about a cheeseburger that doesn't make any goddamn sense <laughs> it's a baby cow it's real it's infantilized <laughs> mm, thesaurus um, but yeah all the guys they go out to hunt the wolves and the women folks stay behind and I, I, the trap that they set up is pretty pretty smart they have like a mm-hmm. goose or a duck it's like tied to the ground and all the men hide in the woods but immediately the amorous boy upon seeing the wolf is like it's a wolf <laughs> Yeah, they like stupid little wiener kid giving him away. I know they have to like immediately cover his mouth. <laughs> I'm like, ah, uh, you can't take him anywhere. That's exactly what I thought. Um, during this though, we get another story, and this story is between the little sister and the mom. And yeah, I, she's telling it to her mom, right? Yeah, there's other way around. Uh, yeah, the little sister is telling the story to the mom. And okay. I thought out of all the stories, this was probably the creepiest. Oh, yeah. I, I like this one the best. It's I'll, I'll let you tell it, but it's it's I thought this one was the best, both in terms of like the, the creepiness of the story, but also the effects. A woman who, whom we've never seen before uh, shows up to a post wedding party all of the there's a bunch of pompous arrogant british people they got their white powdered wigs on they're all eating from a smorgasbord did you notice though there was like an old lady and she's she's like chowing down on the fucking food oh oh yeah and she like chowing down is is putting it mildly like she is shoveling chicken into her face she she's hilarious (laughs) which is even better (laughs) Uh, when you see it exactly (laughs) um but yeah this woman shows up she's pregnant and she's kind of given the shit towards everyone because at one point she was a noble noble woman um but was she that's what i got from it because she was saying stuff like at i was one of you at one point see i i got that from that that she was like a peasant woman who was seduced by one of the the, okay. the aristocratic guy and then just like like dumped her after the fact and she obviously was pregnant so she was pissed that that was how i got it. i didn't i didn't get the impression she was also like a royal person you know what i can see that that makes more sense she's kind of like a commoner that they used and tossed aside yeah um as she's going up the table chastising everyone uh, that old woman is just still like down. loving that turkey leg man um but it turns out that this pregnant woman is a witch and awesome. she starts to turn everyone into a wolf and everyone in this party is going through different states of transformation uh turning into a wolf and you see a lot of the action through shattered glass yeah which really sets a really good like it it, because this is during the daytime so seeing it through the shattered glass sets a really good mood of like the horror that you're seeing yeah yeah it's like because like when the witch she she first looks at the mirror and it shatters and then she starts looking at each of one of the wedding guests and they all start turning like you said but it's it's such a great it's such a genius idea to show shattered glass because it's it gives you that like it's a little obscured so like the seams and the practical effects kind of are blurred over a little bit without being dark. Yeah. It's so it's, it's like a perfect way to do a transformation. Like you said, in, in broad daylight, cause you, you're just, you just can't quite make everything out, but you see, you see like, yeah, but paws and things like start cropping up under the table and hairy faces and things like that. Really cool. hundred percent. Yeah. It's a, like you said, a really good way to hide the seams of all the effects going on. Yeah. Uh, and then they turn into, they finally transform into dogs, wolves, mm-hmm. and they run off into the woods and uh, all the other peasant type folk servants are really happy and they're kind of celebrating it. And that's the story. Uh, and then we got to the guys blowing away a wolf in a, in a hole. 
uh, upon return from their hunt, the dad is like, I got the biggest fucking dog paw you've ever seen. Check it out. Oh my God, it's a real person's hand. <laughs> and they all start freaking out. Uh, the little sister picks it up and throws it in the fire. And all I could think of was, take the ring off and sell yeah. it. Yeah, you're a bunch of poor peasants. Get that ring. That was a giant honking ring. Yeah. Which uh, I guess, so, okay, here's here's a question for you. Was that was that one of the wedding guests? I would, I think so, maybe. Like, I, it would be interesting to go back and, like, Maybe look at the the groom's hand to see if he has was it the same ring a ring on it and you could yeah. you know kind of like oh okay like I get that that's what they're that's what they were going for yeah that would be kind of cool and see like I, the reason other other reason I like that that story scene a lot too is because it does a better job because I think that's also like an alternate story of like the origin of that werewolf pack like it would they would just they were cursed by a witch to you know, have to go between human and, and wolf form. I think it's, it's a much better done as an origin story. Uh, yes, I think that one is because it's more on the nose. I can understand what they're going for. Yeah, it was right? still weird and interesting, but understandable as like for, for what it was trying to convey. The other one, though, I just I, too I scare. Yeah, I was I'm, t- I'm too dumb. Uh, the movie don't tell me what doing things yeah exactly uh we, are we are we smooth brain film i don't know anymore <laughs> we cut back to the little sister she's back in the village and she's getting a basket ready for her grandma because she's going to go visit and as she's walking through the woods she comes upon a huntsman and this guy unibrow and he's just really uh oh creepy he, he's he, i think a lot of the the werewolves in this are nice guys because he immediately starts doing nice guy shit too like he takes the basket and he's like let's go have a picnic i know where we can have a picnic with each other and it's like dude she wants nothing to do with you yeah, it's real major creeper vibes coming off this guy. And again, it, from like as the audience looking at this movie, this is the same character who is just whining about being bathed by her mother in like a, two scenes ago. And now we've got another scene of a creepy guy in, you know, a hunting coat, like trying to get in her pants. Yeah, in this scene, it's it's gross. It it <laughs> it cuts back and forth between that shit way too much. Where yeah. why do yeah exactly? So but I guess werewolves are going to be creeps. I guess werewolves are going to be creeps, and the little sister is probably middle aged for the eighteen hundreds. I don't how <laughs> long a, how old did that's people a good point actually live in the eighteen hundreds? I don't know women average is probably way low for women because of often they're dying in childbirth so. right uh from the 1500s onward till around the year 1800 life expe- expectancy throughout europe was between 30 to 40 years jesus christ dude. see like I see, uh, that's insane no that, is that i have to i want to know what they're where they got that from though because like I always, I always, I feel like I remember reading about like statistics about life expectancy were, were like, were, were really skewed because of all of the kids who died early in life, like from childhood illness. But then like, if you made it past that, you would have a more or less normal lifespan, like probably like 50 or 60. And it's just like averaging to 30 something. Could be. Yeah. I guess if you have like a hundred babies die that definitely skews the numbers down yeah i, I yeah i i could be talking my out my ass right now i have no idea if that's how they did the math but i mean i guess hygiene was worse and you know medical science wasn't what it was but it said the ni- now. in the 1950s even the world average was 48 years old in the mm-hmm. 50s yikes and now it's 73 Huzzah! Thanks, medical science. Medical science. Woo! And and like modern dentistry, probably. Yeah, that's so weird. That's so weird to think that I would be retired if this was the 1800s. I'd be dead. Well, that's the thing was... because you and me would be either 
well, I'm, I'm like a small wiener kid myself, so I would probably be dead already. You would be uh, like hard labor working even, in a mine or yeah. chopping wood. I got a fucking and black lung. <laughs> you got black lung or something. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad we don't live in those times. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that nice? We'd be dead. We'd and be dead. Poor, and this poor like 14 year old girl would be have would have like 10 kids by now. I, yeah, <laughs> that's horrifying to think of. Um, but yeah, this, this huntsman is definitely putting the moves on a, a very impressionable young girl and they, they make a bet of sorts of like, who can ever get to grandma's house first wins like something. I don't, I'm, I don't really get what they were trying to go for here. Yeah. She's weirdly like suddenly into him. He's, she's like totally falling for the spell and yeah, they, the bet is basically like if, if the werewolf guy gets to granny's house first, he gets to bang her basically. And if she gets there, he gets to bang <laughs> him. It's so, it's so gross. I mean, they don't come out and say bang, but there's like... no losers in this bet. <laughs> <laughs> Except the audience. Except the audience. Cause they have to watch this. <laughs> um, but the huntsman gets to Angela Lansbury's house first. And immediately angela lansbury is like holy shit you're a fucking werewolf and she is she is a woman of action in sheer fucking will because she Mm -hmm. picks up that fire poker and swings it at him and he grabs it and starts burning his hand uh but then and like his like dog tongue starts coming out and like panting that was a really good effect yeah, it was a good, you know, rubber heads tend to not look really good. Like, it's obviously a rubber head. This one looked pretty good. They got the skin tone and, like, the kind of sweaty skin look pretty good. Yeah. I mean, still obvious, still kind of obvious, but pretty good as far as rubber heads go. Uh, and then he, like, not backhands, but he essentially, like, backhands Angela Lansbury. Mm-hmm. Her head flies off, but then it shatters like a porcelain doll. What Plot the fuck twist. is up with that? Granny was made out of talcum powder this whole time. I, I don't, I <laughs> didn't get that. That it, I, I rewound it multiple times, Greg, because I thought I, I must have like, <laughs> I must have sneezed and missed something. Where Granny, there was where the where there was a half second explanation of Granny turning into porcelain <laughs> before she died. Yeah, I was very confused because they don't, don't set know. anything up. I, I I I like I laughed out loud at that because it reminded me of. Did you ever see that spoof movie from the nineties called Mafia? Yes, the woman has that? like the giant breasts on the cover. Yeah, yes. and, and and she's like having an argument with what's his name. And she's got like a little yippy white dog and she she's like throwing plates and furniture at him because she's pissed off. And then she throws the dog and the dog also shatters like a plate, like a plate. <laughs> I that's what happened to Granny's head in this movie. I, I, there's another one because this is mafia mafia with an exclamation mark. Jane yes. Austen's mafia. <laughs> right. But was it yeah. wasn't there? Was there another Oh, uh, you know what I'm thinking of? I'm thinking of Plump Fiction. Oh, God. I don't think I've seen that one, but I can imagine what that is based on the title alone. That one has someone dressed up as Mia Wallace, big boobs. Um, yeah, Plump Fiction. That sounds like a porno, but that's an actual spoof movie. Ew. Exactly. Starring no one. There's like no one in this. <laughs> It's 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 it, it was part of that like trying to ride the wave of Naked Gun and the the Leslie Nielsen classics trying to, and trying to do that kind of movie but worse. Yes. Oh, um, Mafia was good. This one sounds like shit, and I think we had nothing but shit until we got to like scary movie, and then those started to go downhill big time. I gotta tell you, it's been so long since I've seen Mafia. Okay, let me go to Amazon really quick. Oh, it's 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 a it's great. Mafia. Googling, googling. Nine ninety five. It's dead only here. on DVD. All right. Really? Well, anyways, it doesn't. Ha- it doesn't have a Blu-ray release. It doesn't look like it. It has a slash oh. through it. 
That's sad. I was going to like, I, I took a little note to myself. He was like, Oh, I need to go look at for a blu copy of that. I want to own that. But mm. you just answer that question. Yeah. Bummer. Never going to happen. You can get on VHS still. You can get an Amazon prime to you for $9 and 40 cents. Um, <laughs> but anyways, back to company wolves, uh, <laughs> as Angela Lansbury, uh, pulls a Luke Skywalker and she fades from existence oh little sister comes in and she's like oh hey you beat me to the cabin cool and she looks at the fireplace and she sees granny's hair like singeing into the fireplace (laughs) (laughs) and she's like terrifying yeah she's like oh you're you fucking killed grandma you're a werewolf Mm. oh well uh i still like you it it, kind of does seem that way at points like she literally shoots him with a rifle and he's like ow that hurts and she's like oh i'm sorry i'm sorry it's uh, it yet still proceeds to beat the shit out of him some more <laughs> it's it's like schrodinger's character she's both she both is disgusted by him and and is like in love with him simultaneously and we just keep flipping back and forth exactly it's so it's so awkward but if the effect in the beginning of the movie was awesome, this one I would say is amazing. This guy's transformation. Uh, it's almost right up there with American Werewolf in London, I think. Where, you think? Oh, man. I think, it's, I think this one is so good because this is the poster where the wolf yep. snout comes out of his mouth. And it, it's because like the wolf is inside of him right right american werewolf in london they transform into a wolf this is a wolf coming out of someone and i think yeah. the effect is really good oh yeah it's definitely this is another case where like they clearly switch from him right like the actor writhing around in pain to like a rubber like bust of him with his like head and shoulders and then like it's it's really well done and it's lit in a way that you really can't quite tell when they're flipping back and forth and then, yeah, all of a sudden, like a really like a wet dog jumps out of this guy's mouth. A really wet dog. Yeah, you're 100 yeah. percent correct. It's definitely a much different transformation than the one we got before, because like you said, the first one was he they're physically transforming as opposed to this where it's like a dog wearing a guy suit. Yeah, basically still cool, though. And yeah, it's the it's the poster shot. We, we get that kind of like profile shot of the dog snout coming out of the mouth and yep, ends up right in the poster. It delivers on that, thankfully. And, and then as the as the man dog leaves the cabin <laughs> man dog um rosalind tells the story of a woman werewolf who goes to the the village oh i forgot about that story that was the last one right yeah and it's like she's she's talking to a priest who takes her in and bandages the wounds and although the priest was nice to her, she runs off and she like jumps into a well where she lives. It, it's a really, it's a really short one. Like she come, the dog comes out of the well, it's injured. It gets bandaged by the priest as a human. And then the human gets back in the well and that's it. And yeah. What is the significance of that? Uh, that deep down inside, we can't trust the evil that men do. Or you can't trust the clergy. Yeah, for you can only trust the clergy. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Or go live in wells. They're safe places for monsters to be. Wells are swell. Uh, <laughs> hey, dad jokes. <laughs> hey, I'm here all day. Um, <laughs> and then yeah, as as she climbs back into the well, we cut back to present day, where wolves start to come into the house. The English, where, the, the mansion from the very very beginning yeah and the little sister now is awake she starts screaming and the movie ends and thus is the company of wolves i well oh, there's a little bit there i don't know when this happens but we we see her with the the rest of the family in the dream goes to granny's house to find her they open oh, the yeah. door and, and they see Oh, another wolf with the daughter's necklace on. And then she like books it out the door and runs away. Which then how the fuck do you become a werewolf? 
I don't, I don't know. When did she drink transform? Like she didn't get bit or anything. I mean, unless there was something, some kind of gross hanky panky that we missed and that's how she got transformed. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But she's a werewolf now. And then, yeah. And then we cut to the wolves running through the mansion in the beginning. And then she wakes up screaming and freeze frame. Freeze frame. Two stars. The company of wolves. Whoa. Two stars. Two stars. One star for the first transformation. Second star for the next. Yeah. Everything else I, in the begin in the middle is totally forgettable. Okay. I, yeah, I give it two and a half. Um, mostly for all of the really quality production design, like the transformations were great. The sets were great. The costumes were great. The lighting was great. The, all of the great miniatures that we got, like all of the cabins and the town and the church that we see, they're all really cool miniatures that are lit really well. It, this movie looks like a million bucks, but the content is just batshit crazy. And I don't understand it. <laughs> exactly. Oh yeah. Everything in it is off. Like all the aesthetics are really good. Mm -hmm. Everything else is a pile. Yeah. This, this might be one of those movies that I, I could give the benefit of the doubt to, and, and it might benefit from a subsequent viewing, like maybe like taking time to like read like some of the original, like red, little red riding hood fairy tales like do a little bit of reading about it to know more about what they're maybe trying to symbolize and then watching it again to try to like give it a fair shake because maybe I'm just uninformed, but at least, yeah, I, I, coming in cold, it was, I, I, it was one of those things that I feel like I just appreciated at like at the surface level. And oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, dude. I, I, I this isn't my kind of movie. That's a hundred percent for sure. Uh, yeah. A, a wannabe horror movie that just it's a wannabe it's a it's a pretender yeah again and it goes back to what we said in the beginning like I, we we just don't know who this what audience this movie is for you mentioned mom horror which you've talked about in the past like uh the house of the long shadows like really tame like low surprise horror but i don't even know if it's that and i don't know what it is it's not really it's too gruesome to be like a kid's fairy tale movie oh 100 percent. like i this would terrify a child because of those scenes of transformation. I don't know yeah. who, who I don't know who the intended audience is for. And it's not even like a, something that you would show your teenage daughter for like a morality story of keeping it in your pants. Okay, yeah, maybe maybe oh, that's the only thing I can think of actually is that maybe it's like it's it's meant for that kind of early like teenager where they're they're a little bit more mature, they can handle a little bit of like gore it's not like like gore gore but like a little bit of kind of creepy imagery but also they still resonate with like a fairy tale maybe that's what they were trying to go for is somewhere in that age group i i, I guess i'm being really charitable right now i'm grasping the straws but you, you are <laughs> you are being very charitable right here um which is good because like maybe it does deserve the benefit of the doubt and i just can't see it but i also can't see giving it the benefit of the doubt yeah, no, I think I think ultimately it's just maybe in a repeat viewing, it would, it would give it better stars. But coming in from our, our context and the, the movies that we like, it just doesn't seem like it's not not our cup of tea for sure. Hundred percent. There's um, one other like I don't like on a really like technical level of the version. So I, I ended up um I didn't end up because I was I hate ads. So I didn't watch it on Tubi. I ended up renting it on Amazon Prime. No which I'm, I'm OK. I'm OK with having spent a couple bucks with it. I liked it well enough. But there was something really weird about the audio for me. Like the, the, the audio volume was all over the place. Like a lot of the dialogue was really quiet. But then suddenly the, the score would kick in and it would be like I'd have to take my headphones off because it would get so loud so quick. Did you have that happen to you? No. Tubi is free and perfect for crap like this. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I guess, I mean, on that level alone, I guess it would have been nice to go to Tubi, but I, wow, I, I don't know. You, I, I think uh... I'm, I'm okay with it because of how nice it looked. And it was a really qual. It was like a really, it looked really good. It was a quality rip. The stream was really good. I feel like I would have given it fewer stars had I seen it in worse quality and had it been marred by ads. Uh, yeah, the ads were like two minutes each, and I think there was 
five ads total. So this added 10 minutes to the entire viewing experience to me. Yeah. I don't um, know. I, I, you, <laughs> you underestimate the degree to which I hate ads. Oh, <laughs> I Hey, hate I, ads. I will pay to never see an ad. I, uh, I don't disagree with you there. <laughs> um, I, yeah. Classic ads. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, that's, I don't know if I can, I don't know who I'd recommend this to again, because it's, I don't know who the audience is supposed to be. I guess if you, I guess maybe if you're really into like that werewolf transformation subgenre that was popular around this time in the eighties, maybe check this out as kind of like an obscure bit of film history, but otherwise, unless you're watching along with this podcast, which more power to you, I can't recommend it. (laughs) I won't recommend it. Can't nay won't. <laughs> well, what have you been watching? You mean good things, quality uh, things that it, it could be it, even better bad things. <laughs> better bad things. I think so. You and I were talking about this uh, a couple days ago, but so obviously we we got a new Candyman movie. Yes, uh, it just came out on Friday or Thursday of this past week. I think the twenty seventh. Um, so, uh, Becky and I, we, on Thursday before it came out, we watched the original Candyman from 1992. Um, so, you know, speaking of movies that get better with second viewings, I, I had only seen this for the first time, maybe in 2019 or so pretty recently. And then I watched, I was like, okay, that's, that's not bad. Um, I remember liking it well enough, but I, it so much better on a second viewing. I, I appreciated like the story and the music and the performances so much more, um, and I just, I, I appreciated Tony Todd as the candy man in that one so much more, just love him as an actor and just like a really cool urban legend movie. But, and it, it really helped, I think, uh, give you an appreciation for the new candy man, which we went to go see at the Alma draft house, um, yesterday on Saturday. Also really great, like soft reboot slash sequel, good slow burn in the beginning, um, great effects, great effects in the new Candyman. Like they really play up the whole like mirror aspect of the urban legend. And um, I won't, I don't want to give it away. I don't want to spoil it, but I will say that they did cameos right in the new Candyman. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Nice. Uh, apparently they're called Lega sequels. Legacy sequels. Oh, that's okay. So that's the like, the soft reboot slash sequel. That's what that's what they're calling it. Yeah. Okay. Lega sequels. I, I I read that in an article talking about it. And it was like, what's the best Lega sequel? The new Candyman or Halloween? And I was like, you know what? Out of all the dumb terms I've ever heard, <laughs> this is my favorite that I won't like immediately shit on. Lega sequel. It's it sounds kind of stupid at first, but I it's a good I think it's a good description for this genre. Which I, I, I'm kind of, I go back and forth on it because it's definitely a trend, right? Like that's, I would argue that Star Wars Episode 7 is is kind of a legacy like sequel in a way. Oh, 100%. It, and um, The Thing from 2011 is kind of a legacy like sequel. Oh, yeah. It, you're popping member berries and <laughs> going like, <laughs> member this, member that. Member that. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm glad, I'm happy to say that at least Candyman 2021 is a great representation of that kind of trend. They, they did it right. They, they had enough callbacks to the first one. They brought back the cool parts of that lore that worked, and, but they still tried to make it its own thing. So nice. definitely highly recommend it. Go see it while it's in theaters. It's, it's, it's a great one to see on a big screen. Let's see. So I, what you've you been watching, Phil? I watched... Uh, well, I tried to watch Tenet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the DNF of the week. Yes, Tell us that. <laughs> I, I don't get the hype around it. Or maybe maybe the hype was that it was just so confusing. The movie is confusing in the way that, like, I guess reading a map is confusing. Um, all the information is laid out in front of you. You just don't know how to interpret it what you're seeing at moments i was calling the action and what was going to happen later on and then in other parts i w- i just didn't get the motivation of characters mm-hmm. um and i blame it solely based off of the acting of robert pattinson and oh. um i can't think of the other guy's name uh denzel washington's kid's character the the issue between them is 
Denzel Washington's kid must have been given the direction of whisper all of your dialogue. And then um, they went up to uh, Robert Battenson and said, okay, now you actually get to act. <laughs> so you have like these two main characters that are interacting with each other, but not at the same level. Uh, and it, honestly, like the mystery box of the entire thing, I didn't really fucking care about. The mm. whole movie is based off of assumptions, not based off of fact. So it really makes the movie uncompelling because it's, it's characters going, I assume that this guy is doing something evil with a thing instead of going like, this guy is evil and he has this thing. Interesting. It's, it almost sounds like they have, it's like the same problem as Company of Wolves. Yeah. It, it just kind of is inconsequential. And then again, it's like when, as soon as you start introducing time travel into a movie and you start breaking it down of like the rules yeah. and what does it really matter? Um, they bring up the grandfather paradox quite a few times within the movie. Can you, Greg, go back in time and kill your grandfather? Like what would happen? What yeah. would happen? Would you be able to succeed? Because if you kill him, then you'll never exist in the future. If yeah. you do kill him, would you somehow become your own grandfather? Like, would you fuck your grandma and make, <laughs> and make your dad, right? It's Yeah, I was going to say, like, as soon as you start introducing time travel into a movie, you either fall flat on your face or you get a Back to the Future or you get a Terminator or you get, you know, any of the other classic sci-fi novels from the 50s and 60s that right. do it better. Uh, and I think it's movies like Looper who immediately go, don't fucking worry about this um, right, because it's right. just confusing. Or if you get something like um, end game where it's like, well, every action that we have just creates an alternate reality somewhere else. It'll never affect us. Then you are like, okay, like they, they've come out with a somewhat creative way of hand waving everything that we're about to do in a way that you buy into and don't yep. think about because the rest of the movie is cool and interesting. Exactly. Uh, Ant Man shrunk. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's I have to say, like I, when you and I were talking about Tenet before, like you'd asked if I'd seen. I I, I completely forgot that it even existed because I think it it got lost in the COVID shuffle, and I just never thought to go back and watch it. But you should keep it that way. Yeah, it's I it's I probably something I will. I mean, maybe if I happen to get it for free at some point, maybe I'll give it a couple minutes to try it. But it's like three I, hours long too. Uh, I will give, I will watch Lord of the Rings for three hours. Very few other movies will I spend three hours of my time on. It's, it's a daunting number, three hours. So when you're, when you get two hours and like two hours plus into it and you're still like, I fucking don't <laughs> like what I'm seeing. WTF is going on. You're going to cut your losses. Yep. Turn off the TV. You turn it off. Uh, but the next evening we watched god damn it i even raved about it to you i think it was called annie lee's meat pies annie lee's meat pies yeah uh, a, a vinegar syndrome release a vinegar syndrome release about a group of women that kidnap and kill men and turn them into meat pies and i don't understand how this movie doesn't have a cult following yeah. it was so good <laughs> it was i hated the new <laughs> christopher nolan highbrow film but the movie about <laughs> turning people into meat pies <laughs> is you get your kind of a plus rating yeah, it gets my fucking blood pumping <sighs> you know i think we you and i have watched a lot of the like the vinegar syndrome like these cult movies unknown i mean dare i say trash but in an endearing way H have we ruined our palate for for movies you know i was thinking the same thing <laughs> because this morning i was watching angel three that had a quick scene of dick miller in it and i was like oh, miller yeah. time baby hey. um, and again it's like it's lowbrow it's sleazy it's cheesy there's like gratuitous action for no reason and nudity yep. and i'm like this... bad acting bad effects bad it's... stunts exactly and i'm like this is i eat this shit up and yeah. i'm just i was just thinking to myself like I didn't see the Green Knight yet. I was thinking to myself, what happens when I finally watch the Green Knight? And I'm like, none of these people are being turned yeah. into meat pies. What the hell, man? 
<laughs> right? Uh, I need meat pies. Duck Miller, yay. I think it, it comes down to I want hamburgers more than filet mignon. Mm, that's a good that's a good metaphor. So you you you've you've learned to really appreciate the junk food of movies. Yes. Yeah. I can still always appreciate an uncut gems. I can appreciate highbrow art as it comes along. I like The Witch, which is a Robert Hell Eggers yeah. movie, and it's very deep and introspective. Um, I liked The Lighthouse, though I fully admit I don't think I understood everything about it. Uh but I would rather watch meat pies. <laughs> Auntie Lee's meat pie. You know, we, we throw that phrase smooth brain a lot. Uh, did, did did we smooth our own brains watching movies like Auntie Lee's meat pies? <laughs> I think, you know, I think it, 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 it comes with the pandemic and setting it forth, watching all these canon films. And I, I would say it's much more interesting talking about movies like this than it yeah. is to sit down and have a discussion of the Green Knight or a time travel movie in which invariably someone will get pissed because your interpretation of the movie <laughs> is so radically different or or the opinions in general are so radically exactly. different. Exactly. I'm going to be like, he was really the purple knight. He'd be like, I'll fucking kill you, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> this represented toxic masculinity. No, this represented violence of childbirth. Fuck you. No, fuck you. I'll kill you. Exactly. Uh, instead, if we get to go meat pie um and <laughs> we both <laughs> and it's all it. uh, it's all on the nose it's yes. it's you, what you see is what you get and what you see is gratuitous violence and nudity and trashy dialogue a hundred percent you know it's, maybe it, it's just easier yeah it's 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 comfort food as opposed to it's something that's easy to enjoy as opposed to things you have to really spend some time thinking and reminiscing about to really appreciate properly. Exactly. Um, but that doesn't mean I'll still go see Dune and I'll see all the other big, you know, highbrow thought provoking movies, but those come at a time sink too, because they, they, because there's more story, it's longer. So as much <laughs> as I would love to watch, you know, Blade Runner a thousand times. It's a longer movie. Yep. I would, yeah, I would say, yeah, it's, we're, we're, this is, we're, we're getting very meta here. We should save some of this document, this, uh, this discussion for one of our retrospectives. Yes. But I will say to kind of tie a boat on, boat on that point is I think it doesn't smooth our brains. I think it makes us appreciate the good shit more by being able to also appreciate the bad shit. A hundred percent right? It makes the good stuff really stand out and you realize why it's good because you know why the other stuff is bad. Yes. Very well put. There we go. It's, it's, it's not smoothing our brain. It's sharpening our brains. Sure, we got edges. We got, got all those <laughs> twists and turns. Mm. Oh man. Uh, yeah. And I think that that's about it that I saw this. That's like notable. I mean, I watched a ton of fucking Bob's burgers and mama's family, but <laughs> you really don't want to hear me talk about that. No, no, I don't. <laughs> um, well, the next film that we're going to watch is your favorite kind. It's a boner comedy. <laughs> You're dying over there. Are you okay? Wow. I picked a perfect time to like swallow my own spit wrong. <laughs> but that is that about sums up my opinion of boner comedies. Um, God it, damn it. <laughs> it's called Hot Chili. A group of American teenage boys go south of the border to work for the Ugh. summer at a Mexican resort where they encounter many wacky guests and have many Ooh. zany adventures. I hate it already. I'm getting flashbacks to um, what was that one with Bender? Oh, geez. Um, making the grade. Making the grade. I'm having flashbacks to that already. I'm looking at the names of the characters, and at least it isn't shit like Apple Fanny Bottom and, and Blimp and Blimp uh, and stupid shit like that. So uh, <laughs> Tommy Bonerman. The Tommy Bonerman. The, the, <laughs> There's only like three that I can see here. Two of them are credited as Fat Singer and Ugh. another guy named Pedro. Those look like the worst names in it. So. Well, they're going south of the border. So, okay, I'm, I'm already predicting like 
lots of racist jokes, lots of gratuitous nudity, lots of like off color sexist humor, just oh, I... the worst of every bucket of humor from this era. Yes. Um, interesting to uh, not interesting to note, but I uh, on IMDb it always goes like if you like this movie, you'll like this one. Uh, I don't think this is a canon film, so we're safe here. But the Malibu Bikini Shop, starring Bruce Greenwood, Christopher Pike from Star Trek. Oh, Bruce Greenwood! <laughs> he has an oh. '80s boner comedy too. <laughs> who doesn't? I mean, who wasn't in an '80s boner comedy? If you live through the '80s, you got a boner comedy. Yeah, I mean, if you live, like, there's like one invariable thing for all these character actors: you were in a boner comedy, and you were in an episode of Star Trek or X Files. Exactly. No exceptions. <laughs> Oh man. Well, we we did talk about the quote of the week, but you'll hear it here again. Oh man, don't eat apples that <laughs> fell on the ground, Greg. Oh, Angela Lansbury, just spitting facts, man. Spitting facts and mad rhymes. Uh, <laughs> and turn it into porcelain. That was again, that's just so weird. I don't get it. Um, but Classic. do you have do you have anything else? No. I'm good. Nothing, nothing else to say about Company of Wolves. It's there. Go, go watch The Howling. Go watch American Werewolf in London. You'll thank us. Hey, you know what? I'm going to echo that. Go watch The Howling. Too many people haven't seen that one. Everyone goes to see American Werewolf in London, which is great in of itself. But watch The Howling. Yeah, that's our parting words. Well, if you like what you're hearing, please subscribe to the podcast and leave a review. Give us some constructive criticism and how we can make this podcast more enjoyable to you. You can follow us on YouTube at That's Canon. We're on TikTok at That's Canon Podcast. And you can also email us at That's Canon at gmail.com. And remember, since we said it, That's Canon. Oh.